Altitude, or elevation above sea level, is a critical factor that significantly influences climate. As you ascend in altitude, the environment undergoes noticeable changes in temperature, atmospheric pressure, and weather patterns. In this video, we'll do an in-depth exploration of how altitude affects climate, the underlying scientific principles, and practical applications for incorporating these concepts into your world building projects. Altitude refers to the height of an object or a point in relation to sea level or ground level. It's measured in meters or feet above mean sea level. Elevation is often used interchangeably with altitude when referring to the height of landforms. Now, what importance does altitude have in geography? It influences various environmental factors like temperature, pressure, and humidity. It plays a crucial role in determining climate zones, vegetation types, and animal life at different elevations. And high altitude areas like mountains and plateaus contribute to the Earth's biodiversity and hydrological cycles. Big concept alert. You have the temperature lapse rate. The lapse rate is the rate at which air temperature decreases with an increase in altitude. The average lapse rate in the troposphere, which is the lowest layer of the atmosphere, is approximately 6.5 degrees Celsius per 1,000 meters, or 3.5 degrees Fahrenheit per 1,000 feet. But you might ask, why does temperature decrease with altitude? Well, first, you have atmospheric pressure and density. Atmospheric pressure decreases with altitude because there's less air above pushing down. Air density also decreases, and thinner air holds less heat. Second, you have expansion and cooling. As air rises, it expands due to the lower pressure. Expansion leads to cooling, which, is, which causes the temperature to drop. Now the key point here is that the higher the altitude, the cooler the temperature, which influences climate and ecosystems at elevated regions. Now let's talk about altitude and atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure decreases with altitude. At higher elevations, the reduced pressure affects weather patterns and biological processes. Lower pressure at high altitudes can lead to increased solar radiation exposure due to thinner atmosphere, greater temperature fluctuations between day and night, reduced oxygen levels, which affects respiration in organisms. Let's next talk about altitude and precipitation, and here we're going to have another big concept of the, the orographic effect. The orographic effect is the change in atmospheric conditions caused by elevation changes, particularly when air masses are forced to rise over mountains. Now what's the process here? Well, you have the windward side of a mountain. Moist air approaches a mountain range. The air is forced to rise, expanding and cooling, and that cooling leads to condensation and cloud formation. This results in increased precipitation on the windward side of the mountain. On the leeward side, after crossing the peak, the air descends. That air compresses and warms, and that results in drier conditions, creating a rain shadow on the leeward side of the mountain. This can form mi microclimates. Mountains could create diverse microclimates over short distances. You have variations in sunlight exposure, slope orientation, and elevation that contribute to those microclimates. It also impacts vegetation and ecosystems. The windward slopes often support lush vegetation due to higher rainfall, and the leeward slopes may be arid and support drought-resistant plants at most. For an example, look at the Cascade Range in the Pacific Northwest. The western slopes receive heavy rainfall and support temperate rainforests. The eastern slopes lie in a rain shadow, resulting in semi-arid climates. Moving on with another big concept alert, we have altitudinal zonation of biomes. As altitude increases, distinct ecological zones or life zones occur. Similar to how biomes change with latitude, they also change with elevation. You have lowlands at the base of the mountain, which are similar to the surrounding regional climate and ecosystems, maybe with warm temperatures and diverse vegetation. You have montane zones, have, which have cooler temperatures and maybe mixed forests, deciduous and coniferous trees. You have the subalpine zone, where the temperature decreases further. Coniferous forests dominate. There's shorter growing seasons. You have the alpine zone, which is above the tree line. There's no trees due to cold temperatures, and there's short seasons. And there's tundra-like conditions with grasses, shrubs, and hardy plants. And finally, you have the permanent snow line, and that's the level above which snow is going to be there all year long. 
Now, the factors influencing this zonation, well, you have latitude, right? The higher the latitude, the lower the elevation at which each zone occurs. You have aspect, south-facing slopes in the northern hemisphere receive more sunlight, and that affects vegetation. You have climate variability as well, so you have local climate conditions that can shift zonation patterns. How do you apply that in your world building? Well, you can use that altitudinal zonation to create diverse ecosystems within a single mountain range or microclimates within a single mountain range. Altitude also can affect weather patterns with mountain weather and variability. You have rapid weather changes that are common due to unstable atmospheric conditions the higher up you go, or graphic lifting that can lead to sudden storms, and temperature inversions that can cause fog and frost. This impacts climate systems. Mountains can act as barriers, which can influence regional climate patterns. They can block or redirect prevailing winds and storm systems. For example, the Himalayas prevent cold Siberian winds from reaching the Indian subcontinent, which contributes to the region's monsoon climate. Altitude also influences human activities, influences settlement patterns. There are challenges to high altitude living. There's environmental stressors like lower oxygen levels, harsh weather conditions, and limited agricultural potential. You might see adaptations, physiological adaptations like larger lung capacities or higher red blood cell counts. You could see cultural adaptations, so you might see unique architectural styles like thick walled homes or clothing, and dietary practices that are different. For some examples of high altitude civilizations throughout history, look at Andean people like the Quechua or the Aymara that live in the Andes Mountains of South America, that practice terrace farming and cultivated hardy crops like quinoa and potatoes. Look at Tibetan communities that reside on the Tibetan Plateau that have adapted to hypoxic conditions, that have spiritual practices that are influenced by the harsh environment. Altitude also, as we mentioned, affects agriculture and livelihoods. So you have shorter growing seasons, you have limited crop varieties that are suitable for those colder climates the higher you go. Herding of animals that are adapted to high altitudes is more likely. So things like yaks, llamas, alpacas, and you might see resource exploitation in those environments. So mining of minerals, or in more advanced societies, the use of mountain streams for hydropower. Um, altitude also affects transportation and trade. So there's infrastructure challenges to building in these more difficult mountainous environments. Think about roads, the risk of landslides, the risk of avalanches. So for your world building, identify those elevated regions within your world where there are mountains, plateaus, or highlands. Analyze the climatic effects for each elevated region. Consider how the altitude will affect the temperature, the pressure, precipitation. Develop those altitudinal zones. Assign the biomes to the different elevations. Find the flora and fauna that are adap adapted to each zone. Create those societal elements. Design the cultures or communities that inhabit those high altitude areas and how they've adapted their lifestyles their, and their interactions with lowland societies. So as altitude increases, again, consider lower temperature, lower air pressure, higher precipitation on the windward side of a mountain, lower precipitation on the leeward side. Think that altitudinal zonation of biomes where you have biomes changing as you go up the mountain or up in altitude. Consider how altitude affects human activities. Think about agriculture. Think about settlement patterns. Think about culture, transportation, and trade. When you apply these effects of altitude to your world, it will result in a more realistic world, a more believable world, and a more enjoyable world. Thank you again for watching my video. I want to remind you that every video I do, all the work that I do, all the research that I do is aimed at advancing my free open source procedural map generator. You can use the procedural map generator in browser by going to ck2rpg.github.io slash generator. If you enjoyed this video or enjoy the procedural map generator, please like and subscribe below. Thank you again for watching.